go. Streaming from South Africa to the world. To the world. This is the Stonks Go Moon podcast. What just happened? We break it down so you don't have to. Welcome everyone to the Stonks Go Moon podcast. My guest today is Cecilia Shu, the founder of Morph. Welcome to the pod. Thank you for having me here, Rocco. Uh, let's stuck, get stuck right into Morph. I want to ask you, um, how can a layer two, right, like Morph, truly bridge the gap between blockchain technology and everyday consumers? Yeah, that's a very good question. So uh, Morph is actually, well, as you said, we are EVM layer two, but uh, I would better like position ourselves as uh, like a consumer layer. So mm-hmm. um by saying layer, actually, there's a lot of meanings besides the blockchain itself, because by saying blockchain, it's basically only a technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you said, that it's a pure technology, which is far away, probably far away from the everyday users. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what we are doing is that uh, 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 making us as a bridge to connect both sides. So on one side, we see that the blockchain technology is solving a lot of problems like decentralization, Uh, the problem of centralization Mm. but on the other hand we also see that it's so complicated it's far away from people's life Um, we see a lot of like scalability uh, solutions scaling solutions on the market probably there are like um, around 200 scaling solutions as layer twos on market and comparing with each other yeah they are uh, just optimizing very minor technical features okay. uh, with each other. Um, and with this, if you are just comparing with higher TPS, parallel EVM, non-parallel EVM, it actually doesn't make too much sense to the end users because they mm. don't care whether don't you care. are 100,000 TPS. Yeah, yeah. It, whether it's 100,000 TPS or 1,000 TPS, they don't yeah. care. As long as it's usable, they're happy. Right. So the, this is the problem we see on the market when we start this project. There are too many infras, but too less users. So what we are Ooh, going yeah. to solve here is to focus on uh, building for everyday users, which means that the whole UX, yeah, the UI should be super easy, super simple for use, uh, like normal users to access. It's not built for uh, crypto native people. It's mm. built for a retail users, your friend, your family, mm. anyone who can use internet, who's interested to uh, use an application on their phone. So it should be as simple as that. And the other thing is that we should build more things which is uh, related to your daily life. It mm. shouldn't be things about, you know, only about DeFi, about GameFi, about NFT. Yes. 40% of the, uh, the, the apps are uh, DeFi applications, but for normal users, they don't know so much knowledge about mm. a DeFi product. They need to spend so much time to di- uh, to spend in a community to think about like, how can we do the DeFi farming? How can I do staking so that they can use the product? But for uh, uh, like the most like 99% of retail users on the market, they don't know how to use it. So why not build for um, something which is close to their daily life? For example, uh, entertainment, loyalty, Mm -hmm. lifestyle, social related uh, application, and also uh, the ones we are uh, paying a lot of attention and uh, making a lot of efforts in is the payment and transaction related Mm -hmm. applications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. What's the difference between layer one protocols and layer two protocols? Uh, I think for a lot of uh, projects which come to layer two is because that they think for layer one is like too expensive to use. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Also, they need better scaling solutions. Okay. So if you compare with like building on Ethereum directly, then it's definitely too expensive to build directly there. Uh, and also, but definitely people are considering about, for example, building on Solana or um, building on Ethereum layer twos. They just have different uh, perspectives in terms of different, okay. you know, la- layer one as a as a base chain. Yeah. Okay, you touched on scalability, right? And I'm familiar with ZK rollups, but you guys use two forms. You use something called um, optimistic rollups. Is that right? So I've got no clue what optimistic rollups is. So you sort of need to uh, explain to me what optimistic rollups is and how the two kind of fit together. Yeah, yeah. So these are we are actually using optimistic zk rollup. Basically, we are putting like optimistic rollup and zk rollup 
together as a hybrid one.、Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe we are also one of the first ones who do the hybrid thing.、Uh, the reason why we chose to be hybrid is because that we still we think that ZK Rollup is still at early stage back、um, in two thousand. 23 when we just start to build it,、yes. uh, we think it's very early stage technology and also the fee is super high. The cost is super high, so、mm-hmm. that's why we find a middle point to combine OP and ZK together. And the outcome is that it's much more,、uh, it's much safer than the pure optimistic rollup, and also it's more cost efficient than the ZK rollup.、Uh, yeah, an, that's, that's okay, cool.、Uh, how does an optimistic rollup work? This sort of not high technical,、uh, just sort of layman's terms. Yeah, so so basically they are using this uh, uh, like fraud proof challenge.、Uh, mm-hmm. They have a seven days of challenge window. If, if no one challenge you, then they think that you are safe,、uh, but actually it's、okay. not hundred percent safe. Yeah. Okay, and so、yeah. that's why you sort of combine with Zika. Okay, that makes hundred percent sense. And then the、yeah. second thing is. Something that I'd also am not familiar with is something called a decentralized sequencer network. What is that? Yeah.、Uh, so basically, a lot of layer twos.、Uh, so you know that the,、um, the the key value of、uh, the whole blockchain is like safety, decentralization, mm, mm.、Uh, and、uh, scalability, right? But、uh, the thing is, with a lot of layer twos, although we are solving the a problem of scalability,、uh, we are kind of like neglect, neglecting the decentralization problem because most of the layer twos are just using the centralized sequencer,、uh, which means that there's only one sequencer. In the whole、okay. network, and、okay. that sequencer can definitely do anything they want.、Uh, they can manipulate a lot of things, so that's why there's problem of MV, and and also there's problem of one single point like failure. If this sequencer is not working, then the whole chain. Will not stop working, so that's a big problem, a, a big issue. So that's why we need a decentralized sequencer. Which we、uh, on testnet we have like seven sequencers.、Um, mm-hmm. It will solve the problem of single point failure.、Uh, even one sequencer is not working, the whole chain is still running. And also、uh, because it's decentralized, so there won't be one sequencer to manipulate all these transactions,、uh, these orders.、Wow. So I、yeah, this is didn't a, even realize that's、advantage. that's a massive issue.、Um, if more, if you 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 talked about entertainment、um, and you talked about finance, if you could partner with any brand in the world,、um, whether entertainment, fashion, tech,、um, who would you choose and and like what would you collaborate on? Um, well, I think a lot of chains, a lot of、uh, the other layer one, layer twos, they have collaborated with the the, the big names in Web two、mm-hmm. in、um, yeah traditional industries. But the thing is that we haven't really figured out how to、uh, leverage the blockchain technology, the on chain technology, to help them to. Uh, move a step forward. Basically,、okay. it's still about like co-branding、uh, with、mm. Starbucks. With you know all these branding, it's more about okay, we collaborate together. But what are your products?、Uh, oh yes, people haven't、100%. seen the products.、Yet. Perfect, because you always see the brand, the blockchain X, and then the sort of the real world. But then what is what we don't see is the equ the equation. What comes out of it? it looks very nice. This collab, what is coming out of it? That's a very interesting point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't really seen many things interesting from the big companies collaboration with、uh, blockchain technology yet. What would you build, right? What, what, like, given anything, what would you build? What is sort of your dream app on Morph?、Uh, no limits, no restrictions. What would it be? Yeah,、um, I think for us,、uh, definitely the vision of、uh, Morph is to bring blockchain into mass adoption,、um, and definitely with the consumer focusing, we are basically building the fundamental thing, which makes people,、uh, whether you are in Web three or Web two, start to realize that okay, my daily life can actually be supported by a lot of blockchain technology.、Mm-hmm. But I think the Biggest pain point and the the thing which we can definitely solve、uh, 
uh, the the problem with blockchain is the as I said the payment and transaction issues we have in this world. You know everybody is still using the Swift uh, system, which it was built 50 years ago. Uh, the whole system hasn't been changed. The technology hasn't been changed for 50 years. And the problem is that the sequence uh, the consequence is that uh, it's super slow. Uh, the the cost is very high. And also there are a lot of regulation KYC issues in between. So if you are, I'm not sure where you are based, but if you are going to transact money to any other countries, it's painful, right? Uh, And also think about if you are from Middle East, they just Mm -hmm. restrict you because you are a person who lives in Middle East, in Dubai, for example, Mm -hmm. they basically always give you super strict KYC if you are going to transact or take the transaction uh, in your in your country because they think that, that, that there's some like uh, terrorist uh, issues mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but blockchain can definitely solve these problems with the, it's basically what uh, Bitcoin was uh, designed for, right? Peer to peer transaction with super low cost, cost with the transaction in time and you don't need to worry too much about about the KYC uh, issues. So this is what MOVE is going to help with uh, to build up a like more flat, more easy, more simple uh, transaction system around the world. And also we see a lot of countries, their own uh, fiat currency has some uh, uh, big issues. For example, mm-hmm. Turkey, for example, Latin. Um, mm-hmm. Turkey from January to to to, to date today, uh, they have over 50% if I'm not wrong, 50, over 50% of inflation rate just in this yes. year. So it's yeah. crazy. Um, yeah. But definitely like stable coin uh, and also other cryptocurrencies can help them to solve that problem. It's just how, uh, yeah. is there any uh, chain, any chain ecosystem is going to solve these problems? I think it's huge, huge, uh, not only market, but it's huge pain points, which is real world problems Mm -hmm. in this world right now and no one is really going to solve this problem so comparing with just building up small DeFi projects focusing on a very small group of um, Mm -hmm. crypto native community uh, which maximum I would say like several million of people target audience and uh, to a a big entire country population uh, problem Uh, Mm -hmm. I think Mob is definitely choosing the next one the second one the second one awesome love it Cecilia thank you so much for joining me today if the listeners want to go and connect with you and more where can they do that um well uh, you can definitely uh, follow our twitter account which is uh, morph l2 and mm-hmm. also my personal twitter account is Cecilia Shu. it's just my name uh and definitely also we have listed all our contacts on our uh, official website and we'll put all the links in the comments thank you so much for joining me and to our listeners peace love and prosperity we'll catch you in the next one cheers